Hello, I'm Karen Brooks Nelson from Document Camera Experts. We're North America's largest supplier of document cameras. I'm going to talk to you about items to consider when purchasing a document camera. What is a document camera? It's an amazing tool that can help you turn a class or meeting into a dynamic learning and sharing environment. View documents, examine 3D items, and turn every book into a big book. Here are just three of our document cameras. The AverMedia AverVision CP300, the Elmo TT02, and the Smart Document Camera, which integrates perfectly with your smart board, but works well as a standalone product too. What should you consider when buying a document camera for your school or business? One of the first things to consider before purchasing a document camera is how portable do you want your document camera to be? If you're going to be moving from classroom to classroom or meeting room to meeting room, you want to make sure that the unit is portable. These units are all lightweight. The Smart and Elmo have adjustable necks so that they easily fit into a container the size of a grocery bag. The Aver Media folds up. The head fits into a slot in the side of the document camera and now we have a handle to carry this machine from room to room and it'll also fit into a computer bag. Go ahead and move any of these from room to room. The next thing to consider is how easy is it to set up the camera. There are several ways to set up these document cameras. You might attach them to a TV, a computer, or a projector. Whatever the case, you only need a couple of cables. First, you need the power cable, and usually it comes with an adapter, so there are two parts to this cable. If you're hooking it up to a projector, you'll need the VGA cable. And if you're hooking it up to a TV, you'll have an S-Video cable. All of these cameras come with USB cables that will go directly to your computer. And the cameras are also labeled. In fact, this one and the smart camera both have little pictures to show you where you're attaching them. So, all these document cameras are easy to set up. So easy that absolutely anyone can have them up and running in minutes. Now you want to think about special features that you need. Do you have old photographic slides that you want to look at? Buy a camera that has a slide adapter. Maybe you're teaching science and you want to show the class what you see through the lens of a microscope. While you can put most cameras over the lens, you might want a camera with a special adapter to ensure that no outside light leaks into the lens. There are special microscope adapters available for the CP300. And if you would like to see how to use these, check out our training videos at documentcameraexperts.com. Perhaps you want to display photographs from a digital camera that has an SD memory card. Look for a document camera that has an SD slot, like the one in the Elmo and the Smart. You'll find those in the side. Some of the document cameras will capture images directly to an SD card. And most cameras have built-in LED lights to illuminate surfaces. These lights last a long time and are useful in low light situations. Every document camera on our website has its features listed and explained, so please visit us at documentcameraexperts.com. Another important consideration is the software. Most of the document cameras come with software that includes the drivers, and some have software that allow you to change the camera settings or to customize the images that you capture with the camera. If you purchase a smart document camera and you already have installed the notebook software, you won't need anything else. The camera will be fully functional as soon as you plug it in. Now let's look at resolution. Many of the document cameras display 1024 by 768 pixels, which means that they're called XVGA. And this is supported by the newer projectors. However, if you need higher resolution and your projector or TV supports it, look for cameras that display in high definition format. 
you may want to avoid document cameras that are VGA, which is 640 by 480, or SVGA, which is 800 by 600, as they will not give you the image clarity you might want. Most of the time, you're probably going to display your images on a screen. However, you need to think about how many megapixels your camera has if you're going to print out the images. If you're printing, think about this. 4x6 prints require 2 megapixels, 8x10 require 5, and 16x20 require 8 megapixels. So, if you're going to print out large images, more megapixels is better. Digital zoom and optical zoom are two important things to think about when you're purchasing a document camera. Zooming is important because you might want to display text that is as small as eight points, or you may want to put a large object under the document camera. Always, the optical zoom is more important, as this is the one that will give you the best quality. No matter how much you zoom in optically, you will get the same number of pixels in the resulting image. However, if you zoom in digitally, the camera takes a piece of the object you're capturing and it cuts out the rest of the image. Then it stretches that image so that it's the same size as it was before you zoomed. This means that the pixels will be stretched and your resulting image will not be as clear. Instead, use the optical zoom and then crop the image using your favorite editing software. So, look for a camera with greater optical zoom and don't worry too much about digital zoom. Before you buy a document camera, you need to think about how you're going to use the images. For instance, are you using them live or do you want to capture them and move them to your computer? If you're using the document camera with a smart board, you can capture the displayed image with the notebook software. If you're projecting on a wall, screen, or TV, you may want the camera to have internal memory for captured images. Some document cameras capture to an SD card, in which case you'll need a card reader for your computer. These SD cards are bought separately, but as an added bonus, if your digital camera uses SD technology, you can put the SD card into the document camera and project your photos onto a screen or TV. Other cameras have internal memory, so you'll need to use the provided USB cable to transfer the images to your computer. You will also want to investigate capacity of the internal memory, as some cameras can hold more pictures than others, and as a reminder, Check the resolution of the captured images before you buy. FPS stands for frames per second, and it will determine how smooth your displayed motion video from your document camera looks. For those of you who are showing or capturing only still images, the number of frames per second won't matter. However, if you're showing how to complete a science experiment, or you're demoing a surgical procedure, you will want the video to be smooth. If smooth footage is important to you when you're choosing your document camera, remember 30 frames per second is generally a lot smoother than 15 frames per second. Those are just a few pointers to consider when you're about to purchase a document camera. There's lots more information on everything to do with document cameras on the website www.documentcameraexperts.com. Thanks for watching.